German new medicine is really fascinating. And we talk a lot about emotional healing here uh, in Healing Life. But German new medicine was founded decades ago by Dr. Hammer in Germany when he started noticing trends of cancer patients who had similar uh, traumas and and then similar diseases, similar cancer showing up. And he started, he had a theory and he actually was able to verify his theory over thousands of patients. And what he found was when there's a cancer, when there's a cancer that shows up in a different part of the body, very often there's a brain lesion on the part of the brain that's associated with that part of the body. So this was a big thing that he started seeing on MRIs. There also were lesions that were often found on the associated organ. And depending on the part of the brain that was either like a new, like we call new part of the brain or the older part of the brain, determined whether that cancer was related specifically to that or not. And is it in a healing phase or is it in a disease phase? And without getting into like, I mean, we can talk about this for hours and hours. It's really fascinating stuff. But what they found was cancer very often is actually a healing phase from a trauma that happened earlier in your life. It could be months earlier. It could be years earlier. But some trauma, the loss of a loved one, uh, a self-inflicted uh, trauma, a, you know, someone calls you ugly or stupid or whatever. So a feeling of like uh, self-disgust or self-hatred or self-loathing or self-anger or self-despair. Um, all of these things can show up in the body in different ways. It can be, you know, we've, we've looked, we've done a lot of, I've done a lot of research, and a lot of education on childhood adverse events and their direct correlation to cancers and chronic diseases in the body. And what German New Medicine does is it, it goes into a much deeper look and understanding of why those cancers actually show up in the body. And, and the cancer itself is actually very often in German New Medicine, the healing phase can be the healing phase of the trauma. So let's say you had the trauma, you recognize, oh my gosh, I had this trauma. You do some healing, some therapy, maybe Qigong, different things where you get to a place where maybe you love yourself now again, and you no longer have that trigger that keeps activating, you know, this self negativity or whatever it might be. The cancer can grow, grow, grow until it stops. And then at that point, um, with time, as long as you don't keep re triggering it through fear and other very often people go to the oncologist, go to get, you know, treatments and that tr creates fear. And then the fear keeps perpetuating it. That cancer will actually go away on its own, um, which is really fascinating. Now, that doesn't go without saying nutrients aren't important, diet isn't important, exercise isn't important. All these things, of course, are really important because they help the body facilitate its own natural detoxification and natural healing process. And he also does admit that um, not every single cancer, every 100% of the time, is only caused by a trauma, but he found literally in like thousands of cases, whether it was breast cancer, it was uterine cancer, it was lung cancer, that there was almost always some direct association. And when they did the MRIs, they found the exact lesion on the brain and or the organ and was able to go in it basically through, you know, therapy. Hey, what happened at this time? You know, loss of a child is a big one. Loss or fear of loss or death of a child is a big one with women with breast cancer, for example, um, or the concern of the health or well-being of a child. And when that concern is released, there's no longer fear. Very often that breast cancer goes away. And there's very specific biological explanations of why these cancers happen in these specific organs. Things like Qigong, meditation practices, energy medicine, yoga, um, uh, tension release exercises, trauma prevention, trauma release exercises, these things, the reason they can work so well is because they go beyond just the physical and get into 
the energetic, the emotional, and the spiritual experience of our human bodies and lives, of our entire human beings, uh, physical and non-physical. And so what's interesting that I found with Qigong specifically, for example, is that with a daily practice and people healing all kinds of chronic diseases with Qigong, they don't even need to know what Sometimes they don't even need to know what the trauma was or what the energy blockage is. It's just doing the practice and all of a sudden things start to get better. It's because we are energetic beings and emotions, like you can't see emotions or thoughts, but we have them, right? Because you can't see them doesn't make it not real, but we experience our thoughts and emotions every single day. So we know they're real, but where are they? If we can't see them, where are they? Well, they are in our physiology, they're in our bodies, in our organs, in our mind field, in our brain. And they are, uh, even though they're intangible, we can start to see, we can start to measure these things with devices now. But just because they're intangible doesn't mean they're not real and they're not affecting us. And so by doing these practices, we actually are able to free the stuck energy out of our cells, out of our bodies, out of our organs that's stuck and holding it from being able to release itself to its its normal healing state, right? Our bodies are meant to be in a thriving state. That's, you know, we go through these states of uh, rest and unrest, disease and health. We go through these states of, of, you know, trauma and freedom. And we're meant to be able to move through those states freely but when we're children and we don't know how to process these things, or even when we're adults and we don't know how to process these things, we store them inside of us. And everybody knows this when you really talk about it and, and explain it. Like, you know, you have a bad breakup in a relationship, maybe a marriage that fell apart after 20 years or even after a few years, a, a relationship that broke up and how terrible you feel. There's nothing tangible about that. There's, you know, those emotions you're feeling like you can't touch them, but you feel them. You feel them in your stomach, in your heart, in your gut, in different places. You, you know, you feel sick sometimes. You feel sad. You feel hurt. All of these things. Well, where is that? It's literally as energy getting stuck inside of our bodies until we know how to release and transform it. There's a documentary series I was watching last night on Netflix called The Human Playground. And they were showing a woman who was sexually abused, who basically was ready to commit suicide. And she found um, ice bathing, uh, studied Wim Hof and said, well, look, she made a joke of it, but it's also pretty serious. She's like, well, maybe this can help. I can kill myself tomorrow. So she gave herself a chance to go try it, you know, and um, and it started connecting her deeply within herself in a way that she never could imagine because she didn't know how to process that trauma from being sexually abused. I mean, how terrible and terrifying and damaging is sexual abuse and, and not being able to deal with that. Like how many, so many women are in the same position and not having the support and the care and the education and the know-how of like, how do I deal with this terrible thing that just happened to me? And oftentimes you feel sick and disgusted and you know, can't touch yourself or have other people touch you, you know, all of these traumatic things happen. And rightly so, it's a very traumatic thing to happen. But then in those situations, if you don't process that and, and get that out of your body and transcend that, then it will turn into disease, it will turn into cancer, it will turn into other challenges within the body. And so she found ice bathing, cold hydrotherapy. I've been doing ice baths and cold showers for a very, very long time. It's fantastic for the immune system. It's fantastic for, you know, deep, deep, deep nervous system regener um, recalibration. It really helps recalibrate your nervous system. And you don't have to jump into an ice lake, you know, uh, right away. Like you can start with a cold shower <laughs> at 30 seconds and then turn it to warm and start doing that a few times a week and still get great benefits from cold hydrotherapy. But it's not just physical, that's the point. It's, it's mental, emotional, spiritual as well.